I thought I had my life figured out at 26. I had a career, friends, and a fiancé I thought I was madly in love with. For five years, I had been with this man, and I truly believed we had a future together. He was 27, and we had been inseparable since we started dating. He was my best friend, or so I thought. When we got engaged in February 2024, I was filled with hope and excitement for the life we were about to build together. But looking back now, I can't believe how blind I was, how utterly oblivious I had been to the countless red flags waving right in front of me. It's easy to miss the signs when you're so desperate to believe in the fairy tale. I clung to the illusion that we were perfect together, that we were building something meaningful. I was young and full of optimism, ready to take on the world with him by my side. We set our wedding date for March, deciding to marry on the anniversary of the day we first met. I thought it would be a beautiful, romantic way to start our marriage, tying together the past and the future. I envisioned a perfect day, surrounded by loved ones, full of joy and love. By May 2024, the wedding planning was in full swing, and I was completely invested in making our day as special as possible. I spent hours upon hours designing mood boards, dreaming up themes and coordinating colors. I chose a delicate light blue and white palette, thinking it would capture the fresh, hopeful energy of spring. I poured over Pinterest boards, looking at floral arrangements, table settings, and bridesmaid dresses. I spent late nights researching venues, caterers, and florists, carefully curating every aspect of our wedding day. Through all of this, my fiancé seemed distant. He showed little interest in any of the decisions I was making, and I should have noticed it then. When I'd show him ideas, he'd give short, almost dismissive replies. Looks good or sure. I told myself it was just him giving me the space to plan the wedding of my dreams, but now I see it differently. It wasn't that he was giving me freedom. He simply didn't care. I convinced myself he was busy with work, but in hindsight, it's clear that he wasn't invested in this at all. What I didn't fully understand at the time was how deeply tied he was to his mother. He was an only child, and their relationship was much more than I initially realized. They talked multiple times a day about everything, what he should buy, what he should eat, what decisions he should make. At first, I thought it was sweet, a sign of a close family bond. But soon, I started to see the cracks forming. Every decision we made, no matter how small, was run by her. I brushed it off, thinking it was just part of how he was raised, but I didn't realize how controlling it would become. A few weeks ago, I had what should have been one of the happiest moments of the entire wedding process. Wedding dress shopping. My mom and sister came with me, and we spent an entire day going from boutique to boutique, searching for the perfect gown. After hours of trying on dresses, I finally found the one. It was everything I had ever dreamed of elegant classic and made me feel like a princess. The dress needed a few small alterations, but when I looked in the mirror, I knew this was a dress I would walk down the aisle in. I was ecstatic. My mom and sister were practically in tears, gushing over how beautiful I looked, and for the first time in months, everything felt like it was falling into place. Excited, I sent a few photos to my fiancé, and for a brief moment, I was on cloud nine. He replied that the dress was beautiful, and for the first time in a long time, I felt a genuine connection with him. But that happiness didn't last long. What I didn't know was that as soon as I sent him those pictures, he immediately showed them to his mother, seeking her approval. It was like he couldn't make a decision without her input. When she saw the dress, she lost her mind. She called me while I was still out with my mom and sister, but I ignored the call, figuring I would get back to her later. Little did I know that she had already decided to confront me. By the time I got home, she was there, waiting for me in my living room. She had let herself into our house, using the spare key we had given her for emergencies, sitting on the couch as if she owned the place. My happiness from finding the perfect dress evaporated the second I walked in and saw her glaring at me. Before I could even greet her, she launched into an angry tirade. According to her, I had promised to wear her wedding dress, an ancient, outdated gown from 30 years ago. She accused me of being a liar, 
saying I had agreed to wear it years ago when she first showed it to me. I was completely blindsided. I had no memory of ever making such a promise. Maybe, in the early days of our relationship, when I was trying to make a good impression, I had said something polite about her dress, but I had never, ever promised to wear it. I tried to stay calm, explaining that I had never made such a promise, but she wasn't having it. She kept calling me a liar, her voice getting louder and more aggressive. She said I didn't deserve to marry her son, that I wasn't good enough for him. I was stunned. This was a woman I had spent years trying to please, bending over backward to make a good impression, and now she was tearing me apart over a dress. What hurt the most was that my fiancé wasn't there to defend me. He wasn't anywhere to be found. His mother was attacking me in our home, and he was nowhere, leaving me to fend for myself. After what felt like an eternity, she finally stormed out, leaving me completely shaken. When my fiancé finally came home, he acted like he had no idea what had happened. I explained everything to him, hoping he would finally stand up for me. Instead, he started defending his mother, saying she was just upset and that I had probably promised to wear her dress. That night, I lay in bed feeling completely alone. The man I thought I knew, the man I had built my future around, had taken his mother's side without even hesitating. All the love I thought we had, the partnership I thought we shared, was a lie. The next morning, I woke up to a barrage of texts from his mother, continuing her verbal assault. She called me a liar again and again, saying I wasn't worthy of her son. I showed the messages to my fiancé, hoping he would see how hurtful she was being, but instead he dismissed them, saying she was probably just hurt that I didn't want to wear her dress. That was the moment it all clicked. This wasn't about the dress. It was about respect, about loyalty, about having a partner who would stand by me no matter what. And I realized with a heavy heart that I didn't have that. I had spent five years with a man who would always put his mother first, who would never truly be my partner in life. I was devastated. How had I not seen it before? How had I let myself get so caught up in the fantasy that I missed the reality? It all started when my future mother-in-law offered me the chance to wear her wedding dress for my big day. At first, I thought it was sweet. Maybe I could incorporate a piece of jewelry from her or even add some lace from her dress into my veil as a small, meaningful touch. But no, that wasn't good enough for them. It was all or nothing. Either I wore the entire dress or I was labeled as an ungrateful, promise-breaking liar. The pressure started building the moment I gently declined wearing her dress in its entirety. From then on, my future mother-in-law bombarded me with calls and texts. She wasn't subtle in her attempts to guilt trip me, making passive-aggressive comments about family traditions and how I was disrespecting her. Eventually, the insults became more direct, calling me selfish and saying I was destroying their family dream. Through all this, my fiancé remained silent. In fact, it started to feel like he agreed with her more and more as time went on. Any time I tried to talk to him about it, he'd brush it off or change the subject, leaving me feeling completely alone in the situation. I tried to stand my ground, repeatedly reminding both of them that it was my wedding too and that I should have a say in what I wore. But every time, they acted as if I was being unreasonable like I was the one causing all the problems. They twisted everything, making me feel like I was crazy for wanting to wear my own dress at my own wedding. You won't believe the circus my life has turned into after the fiasco with my future mother-in-law. I decided it was time to have a serious talk with my fiancé. I didn't want to keep dragging this out any longer. But let me tell you, trying to have a mature conversation with a spineless mama's boy is a losing battle from the start. First off, getting him to actually make time for this discussion was a challenge. Apparently, his mother's feelings took precedence over mine, his future wife. When we finally sat down, I calmly explained how I wanted to wear my own dress at the wedding. You know, like a normal bride? Is that really too much to ask? But his response, he had the nerve to say that the wedding wasn't just for us. It was also for our parents. Can you imagine... As if I was planning to marry his entire family tree. 
I reminded him that unless his mom was paying for the entire wedding, it was our day, not hers. But it seemed like nothing could penetrate the thick fog of Mama's Boy Syndrome that had clouded his judgment. I even brought up how, before his mom got involved, he told me my dress was beautiful. His response? He admitted that he only said that to make me happy. In reality, he thought the dress was ugly. I couldn't believe the level of deceit. But by this point, I didn't even have the energy to react. It was clear that honesty wasn't a virtue in this family. Still trying to salvage things, I suggested we compromise. Maybe I could wear something else of his mom's. Something smaller, like a piece of jewelry. But no, that wasn't good enough for him or her. He told me I should be grateful that his mom even offered her dress in the first place. As if it was some great honor for me to be forced into a dress I didn't want. Should I bow down and kiss her feet too? I finally snapped. I asked him point blank if he was marrying me or his mother. Because honestly, it felt like he was more invested in making her happy than me. That set him off. He started yelling, saying I was blowing everything out of proportion. He acted like this entire debacle was no big deal. I stormed out, calling my mom for some sanity. Thankfully, she was as shocked as I was and reassured me that I wasn't in the wrong. When I came back downstairs, ready to continue the conversation, he was gone. He had run off to his mommy's house, leaving nothing but a text saying he would stay there until I came to my senses. Well, let me tell you, I have come to my senses. I'm seriously rethinking this entire relationship. If marrying him means marrying his mother too, I'm not sure I want any part of it. Yesterday, the queen herself, my future mother-in-law, called me, saying we needed to talk. Foolishly, I agreed, hoping we could reach some sort of understanding. I should have known better. She started off by accusing me of breaking a promise I never made. She claimed I'd agreed to wear her dress and that she was hurt by my actions. She tried to paint herself as a victim, as if I was the one mistreating her. Before I could even respond, she graciously offered to forgive me as long as I wore her dress. Can you believe that? I shut it down immediately. I told her that it was my wedding day, and I would wear what I wanted. I even offered to wear something else of hers as a compromise, but no, that wasn't good enough. It was her dress or nothing. At that point, I was done being polite. I suggested that maybe she was confusing me with one of my fiancé's ex-girlfriends, since in her mind, we're probably all the same anyway. Just faceless women meant to bear her grandchildren. That set her off. She called me a liar unworthy, and wait for it, a witch. Yes, she actually called me a witch, as if we were living in the 17th century. I hung up on her and blocked her number. Good riddance. Of course, my fiancé then texted me, saying it wasn't fair of me to yell at his mom and that I was the one blowing things out of proportion, never mind that his mother was the one hurling insults. In his world, mommy can do no wrong. I told him to come home so we could talk face to face, but he refused, saying he'd come tomorrow. I spent the night staring at my engagement ring, wondering if this relationship was even worth saving anymore. When my fiancé finally showed up at the house, I didn't waste any time. I laid into him about his childish behavior, his mother's manipulations, and how he'd abandoned me in all this. He tried to interrupt, but I wasn't having it. I told him straight up that this wasn't just about the dress anymore. This was about how he was willing to throw away our relationship to please his mother. Of course, he didn't like hearing that. He accused me of trying to cancel the wedding over something as trivial as a dress. But it's not just a dress. It's the complete disregard for my feelings. Then, when I suggested that this whole ordeal had made me question whether I even wanted to marry him, he lost it. He slapped me. The man I thought I loved actually raised his hand to me over a dress, over his mother's feelings. In that moment, everything became crystal clear. This wasn't love. This wasn't a partnership. This was abuse. I packed a bag and left. I'm done with him. There's no way I'm marrying this man, or rather, this boy.